Hmm. You ever wonder what makes first-person point of view follow cam video footage so prolific in the YouTube mountain bike scene? And why is it so much more popular than third-person point of view? Stick around and I'll attempt to answer this internet mystery. Welcome back party people. Enjoy this short edit first because it's going to give supporting information for the explanation I give later in the video. First, I'm going to ask for forgiveness for the flatness of this mountain bike trail and the crappiness of my riding. Now that I've got my apologies and complaining out of the way, let me offer you some explanations on why first person point of view and follow cam footage is so popular on YouTube. First reason, it is logistically more simple to do because let's face it, all you need to do is pack up maybe a chest mount, maybe a chin mount, and a single camera, head out to the trails. If you've got somebody to follow, even better. If you don't, then at least you have your first person point of view. Maybe you have a gimbal, maybe you don't. Nonetheless, the amount of equipment that you have to carry to the trail is significantly less. In contrast, when you are capturing third-person point of view video footage, you're going to have at least two, maybe even three cam cameras. In this particular video edit, I carried three cameras, so three GoPro cameras, three tripod mounts that I could wrap around trees, sit on rocks, uh, tied to bushes, whatever it may be. Three cameras, three tripods, and I had to wear a backpack in to include all of that camera gear in the backpack. Also, normally, this trail is pretty short. If you ride it back and forth, it's probably seven or eight miles, so I definitely had to carry some water out there because the other thing that you do a lot when you're capturing third-person video footage is you sweat a lot, you walk a lot, and so you're walking to carry equipment ahead to set up your video scene, and then you're walking back to get your bike or vice versa. So either way, there's a lot of riding and there is a lot of walking. Now most of these for this particular edit was one take for me because I'm not trying to prove a point of riding skills here. Everybody knows I can't ride. And then once you have finished shooting the scene, then you've got to either ride your bike back to the cameras or walk back to the cameras and retrieve all of the cameras and the tripods 
put them in the backpack, put your backpack on and remount the bicycle. Now, the one thing that you will see in some of this video footage is I leak where my backpack is and I leak where some of the other cameras are. It really takes a lot of thought into the shot in order not to capture other cameras or other pieces of equipment with the cameras that you're shooting with. Not to mention, knowing that the cameras are actually pointing to you or multiple cameras are pointing on you while you're riding, it makes you kind of self-aware of your riding. So you're not necessarily, unless you're used to it, you're not gonna be as loose as you normally are. And you may try some things that probably don't work in the shot. So you just kind of have to go with the footage, especially if you're not reviewing the footage while you're actually making the shoot. And the other thing you have to be aware of is other people on the trail. So, you know, unless you go early, 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 early in the morning or late, late at night, there's likely to be other people riding the trails with you. And you have to be mindful of folks that are coming through. You can't leave your bicycle leaning in the middle of the trail. And you've got to be aware of when you're trying to get the shot, there may be other people interfering with the shot. So you just got to kind of roll with the punches and uh, take it in stride. All right, so that brings me to point number two. And point number two is from a financial or monetary perspective. And let's face it, most people are making YouTube videos to capture views, to capture attention, to either get sponsorships or get ad revenue. Nobody likes to do work for free. Now, it is significantly more work to actually accomplish one of these third person point of view video shoots. And we already talked about the amount of equipment you've gotta have. So instead of having maybe one camera, now you have two cameras, three cameras, maybe even four cameras and you've got to have the supporting equipment along with that, tripods, additional batteries, and sometimes additional people to help video. And you know the old saying, time is money, and it definitely takes more time. Not only does it take more time to get prepared to go to the trail, it takes more time on the trail, setting up cameras, trying to get a shot, moving equipment back and forth, going back to get your bike. And this particular edit here was just under three minutes long with three cameras. And it took me most of the afternoon, three to four hours of actually capturing this video footage. And this was on one of the most basic trails there are. So as the landscape gets more difficult, filming is gonna be more difficult. So that adds additional time as well. So now you have all this great video footage. What are you gonna do with it? So you bring it back home, you've got three cameras worth of video footage. So you've got three memory cards that you've got to import into your editing system. And then you've got to sort through all of those video clips in time, align those, and then figure out which cuts of which shots you want to actually include in the video. So it makes the editing process somewhat more complex when you have that much video footage and you're trying to compress hours and hours of footage that you've captured into a small edit time frame. So all of that time and effort equals money. So the time spent on capturing, recording, and editing could be spent on making another video or doing something that is more financially feasible. And everybody wants to be rewarded for their effort. And speaking of effort, that brings me to point number three. My final point, thank goodness. And that is the overall ride experience. I don't know about you, but I ride mountain bikes because of the experience. It's fun. If I wanted to do something that wasn't fun, I'd go to the gym. Now, I hinted at this point before, but once you are aware of cameras that are alongside the trail that are pointed at you and capturing footage of you, you become more self-aware, and that takes away a bit from the ride experience for me. When I have the chest mount on or I'm doing some follow cam footage, I am not as aware of the footage that I'm capturing, but I'm more aware of the experience of the ride. So from that aspect, it is a much better ride experience for me doing follow cam footage or first person point of view footage. And not to mention the next day I woke up from capturing this video footage, I felt like I had been beat to death. And part of that is just because I'm old, but you know, you realize that you're doing a lot more walking. You're walking in the trail where the breeze is not flowing as freely as it would if you were actually on the bicycle going a bit faster. So you sweat 
more. You just feel physically more tired after you do one of these shoots. And hence your recovery time is probably going to be a bit longer as well. Now let's keep in mind, I'm just an amateur schmuck here. And look how much I'm complaining about doing this. Time and effort, money, yada, 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 yada. Just think about how much time and effort a professional videographer and mountain biker would put into this. And I can certainly appreciate that. Whether you're a professional videographer or mountain biker, whether you have a crew of one or a crew of five or a crew of ten, you go ahead with your bad selves. All right, those are my reasons why first person point of view and follow cam footage is so prolific on YouTube. Let me know in the comments down below if you have an additional explanation. And that's going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed the content. Just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Cha cha for now.